Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is meeting the needs of neglected and homeless or abused children. And we're fortunate to have with us to talk about some of the needs of abused and uh, neglected children, uh, Pastor Kay Walker. And I think that many of us are familiar with Pastor Kay Walker. He's uh, uh, been responsible for bringing individuals to us. And uh, he has with him this morning, uh, Miss Ashley Burns, uh, who is also an individual who has been responsible for dealing with abused and neglected uh, children. And let me welcome you, Pastor Walker, and uh, you, uh, Ms. Uh, Ashley Burns, uh, to the show this morning. And to uh, start off with you, Pastor, by having you to give us some information about your background, your education, and some mm -hmm. of your experiences. And uh, Ms. Burns will give us the similar kind of information dealing with her situation. Okay. And then we'll have an opportunity to get out of this first segment and then go into the next set segment for eight minutes uh, dealing with this uh, issue of meeting the needs of abused and neglected children. Let's do it from that perspective. All right. Well, good morning to you uh, also, Dr. Haney. And thanks again for allowing us the opportunity to come on your show. You know your show has been running for years and a very informative mm -hmm. show. And I think a lot of people out there watching and a lot of people are being informed. Uh, my name is Pastor Kelvin L. Walker. I'm no stranger here, of course, been uh, like almost like a sidekick to you for from, some from the very, very beginning. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, and, uh, for many years, and I man. appreciate you and everything you do. I was born right here in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, two good parents, you know, they raised me right way, raised me well. I didn't always take heed to what they said. You know, I was educated in the public school system uh, up until a point, you know, I always say I got kicked out of the school system. I uh, went into the United States Navy, stayed a short period of time, got out of there and uh, pursued a GED through Opportunities Industrialization Centers, OIC. Uh, spent six months doing that, got the GED, and then went to Tennessee State University. Had a desire to become a fashion designer, but uh, got caught up in drug addiction and the like, and uh, they kind of derailed that along the way and ended up incarcerated in the state prison system for a period of time in my life. But back in 1986, on August 24th, God divinely intervened in my life, changed my life, you know, brought me and called me into ministry, and I've been serving others ever since that time, you know, and, and trying to make contact with people that are out here uh, on the ground, getting things done in terms of helping and serving people in whatever way and whatever capacity. It just gives me pleasure to be here today uh, to uh, bring on the show uh, Mrs. Ashley Burns, you know, and I met her uh, through the juvenile court system uh, after my daughter was murdered back in uh, March the 24th, 2015, and we went to uh, take custody of my, uh, of our grandchildren, my wife and I, grandchildren, so uh, that's how we met. Very good. And Ms. Burns, let's talk about your background, your education, some of your experiences. Absolutely. And then I have some personal experience as well that um, brought me into this field. Um, well, first of all, my education is I'm a TSU graduate. I actually started my first year at UT Martin and then um, finished it out at TSU. Um, my major was completely different, was fighting for what I knew that I was, was supposed to be, even though I didn't know exactly what that was. I knew it was something to do with children, but I wasn't sure. And um, got interested because I was failing my pre-med classes. I ended up um, pursuing in child advocacy. was thinking about an attorney, but knew I wanted to be um, more of an advocacy role mm -hmm. than actually what an attorney because of the politics actually wanted to be more of what, even though there was a lot of stigma with, of course you don't make a lot of money and uh, is, a case, is a case manager. Yeah. Um, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna go that route even though, because um, this is my passion. And I realized that more and more. I did an internship with juvenile court um, when I was at TSU um, working at juvenile court. I was a uh, uh, interning for probation officer at Elizabeth Dial and um, just fell in love with, uh, with that kind of work. And I realized because of my background, because it was so rocky, um, I was the first one that um, graduated uh, in my family, in my immediate family. Uh, I, um, I wanted to uh, pursue something that involved the court, especially when it came to delinquency and, child, and actually uh, child abuse. I think there's a big correlation with that. Mm. Um, more than we realized, and that was kind of my focus, even though um, and that was my love is to work with the delinquent children because there is such a big correlation with abuse mm -hmm. and neglected child. 
Uh, Very good, and, and, and I think uh, we have, I think, Pastor, uh, an excellent show here yes. that will give us a lot of information. I think that your background and your uh, activities uh, will uh, be very, very important in terms of helping us to see some of the needs of uh, some of the abused and the neglected children. And of course, we're going to take our first commercial break, and we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. Is. You know, that's, uh, yeah, yeah, I yeah, think yeah. that's always the best. That's and so good. we've got eight minutes when we come back, Pastor. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we'll start off with uh, you. Uh, what, do, what do you want to talk about neglected children and abused children? I mean, that's our general topic. But what Why? would you like to say for about three or four minutes in reference to that? And then he'll take about three minutes and then we'll come back with you for second statements, about two minutes, and then we'll end it that segment with you, okay. but we'll start with you. Yeah, well, I'll focus on what the court is doing, okay. and then I'll go into some of the um, just intervention type of deal that okay. I'd like to focus on with the community and being a support. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's uh, in good. other words, you'll give us an opportunity to see what the juvenile justice system is all about in a real sense. Is that what we're saying? I'm, I'm definitely going to try. Yes. Okay, well, that's well, that's that's all, and we've Absolutely. got eight minutes. A lot of people so, are not aware of Yeah, that. just take. Uh, the first two or three minutes and talk about that and then give he, he'll have an opp opportunity and so we'll just divide the eight minutes between the two of you three minutes three minutes two minutes uh, a minute and etc you know back and forth like that to give both of you an opportunity to have a good stretch of minutes <coughs> to make some <coughs> okay. excuse me some statements it's your show. <laughs> <laughs> Said I, <laughs> I don't mind going on mute. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you and welcome back to the show this morning. The uh, topic this morning is meeting the needs excuse me, of abused and neglected children. And we're fortunate to have with us again, a uh, Pastor Kay Walker and uh, Miss Ashley Burns. Uh, Miss Burns, let's uh, have you to uh, take a few minutes of this segment to give us some information in reference to some of the things that you do as, as, a, as a person who has been involved with neglect, neglected and abused children. Well, first of all, I wanna say that I've been with the court for 10 years. I've been in um, at least two different positions with the court. Um, there has been a lot of changes. Um, at, at fir first I started at Family Services and then um, I think about four or five years. Then I, um, then I worked uh, with supervised uh, probation and now they're moving, the court is moving in a different direction with our um, new judge, Sheila Calloway. I believe this is gonna come up her fourth year. Um, and she is focusing on more of intervention and community supporting um, the, the families that we serve and especially prevention before they even get to, um, to the court or if it can be handled in a formal way. So they're really trying to focus on that um, and that's stretching us as well of how can we uh, meet the needs of children because regardless of how they're how they're coming there is an issue with abuse and neglect anytime you deal with drug addiction anytime you deal with um, the different issues that they're faced whether it be directly an NND issue um, even children just um, screaming at their at their children still that could result um, if if not maybe that that kid to be um, violent if we don't um, address the needs and their simple needs like um, it might be a program or uh, it might be a connection. Hey, do you know somebody that um, that that does this or that? Um, I tell my families all the time just because I close your case doesn't mean you can't call me and if I can't find out the answer I'll definitely try to find out who can and that's the big part of it. It's the simple things that we can do in the community. It's um, building those relationships, calling people back when you say you're going to call people back. Um, treating them with respect because no matter what I realized from um, uh, from one of the um, major uh, uh, big uh, 
support systems of juvenile court. Icon, in my opinion, of juvenile court, Miss Julia Tucker just passed away. And she was um, been at the court for years. And she always said, um, when I did my internship, treat people the way you would want to be treated. And you're going to be okay out there, mm -hmm. out there on the streets and um, doing the case management and that kind of thing. Because we're in some dangerous situations a lot of times and don't even realize it because of um, the covering of being more of a support instead of how dare you did that you did this oh my gosh you did this instead we're focusing more on how can we make simple solutions it might be um, my four-year-old girls out of her clothes I give them to the neighbor next door in my in our community and of course we're out there right there in James Casey um, there's two offices out there with juvenile court so it's the simple things that we can get involved whether it be something big that you know is on uh, national TV or on the um, on uh, TV or something that is um, that is more under the radar it's all very important and I think we all need to be encouraged more as being out there in the field as case managers and workers it's very draining and to know that we are doing something it might be something small I considered it small what I did with um, with with um, Pastor Walker you know I just did a home study but in in even God's eyes that's big to do the little things and of course um, the negativity of this world does want us to say that we're not doing um, enough, but we, it's to do something. Just to be there is very, very important. Is that mm -hmm. what she's saying, Pastor? Yeah, you know, especially with the uh, support mm -hmm. that's, that the course is leaning toward doing now, you know, that's what I'm hearing, you know, the course is wanting to not just bring people in and, and, and just adjudicate them, but to offer a means of prevention and then even if when they get into the system to be able to support them in, in such a way to to help a person grow from where they are when they initially come in because I, I think Dr. Henry when you take a child that's uh, that's neglected you know and you take a child let me say it like this you take a child that's acting out in school a lot of, in a lot of situations it's stemming from uh, the fact that that child's probably neglected at home. You take a child that maybe gets frustrated in school because they can't keep up academically with other children and the reason why they're not keeping up because maybe the parent is not helping them at home with their homework and, and, and getting involved and showing concern with them so they get in the school system and then they don't know what the other children know and then you get frustrated and then they begin to act out in a, in a setting like that and you know those are things that I, I see as, as neglect you know but a lot of times parents that are neglecting children in such a way may not be seeing that and, and may not notice and understand that when you don't meet the needs of those children then you essentially you're, you're neglecting those children and, and I think that as far as I'm concerned with myself personally the, the, the fact that I had the opportunity, the privilege to become an adult, you know, I should lend my voice and my support, you know, uh, to children to be able to help them, you know, to be a voice for them, to be a support for them, to be a help for them so that they can have an opportunity as, to grow up as well and to live a, a, a peaceful and, and productive and constructive life. You know? you, you think in, in terms of what you do every day, uh, 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 Ms. Uh, Ashley, uh, what would you say that one of the biggest challenges that you have to face dealing with uh, children that are abused or neglected? Uh, what, what, what are some of the one or two large things that loom in your mind that if we could change this thing would be much better? I think one of the biggest changes, of course, it's with ourselves anytime we're struggling is changing that wheel. I, w I was discussing with Pastor Walker about like when you say parenting classes or if you say it's all how you approach especially the the families because again we got to realize okay where do we start with what is the actual problem it might be the the parent or they might be just at their ends right with everything that's going on they might be dealing with the murder um i dealt with the family over the phone before i got here that um the mother is struggling with her son just got killed and then uh, her, her daughter is in drug addiction. So um, it's just one of those things of what can you do to support that, of thinking authentically and out of the box. Like maybe not to focus that it's parenting classes, maybe to focus that, that it's um, 
that it's a, um, what the Pacific issue of maybe twisting it of um, just uh, some encouragement. Okay, and so what we're going to do uh, actually is to take our second commercial break, and then we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. about because anything that you might say is probably news to uh, a large number of folks who are watching this. They might know something about the system, but you know, I think you have, you, you can give them an example of what is going on and some of the challenges that you have to face living with these children. Okay. Okay, so the, the, this will be our 10 minute segment. Okay. Now we're going to start this 10 minute segment off with you. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And then you take about three or four minutes and then you will take about three or four minutes and then we'll give you an opportunity and probably have about a minute of mm -hmm. peace. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. All right, all right. Ready? Thank you and welcome back to the final segment of the show for today. We're talking to Pastor Walker and Miss Ashley Burns, and the topic is meeting the needs of neglected and abused children. And Pastor Walker, let's talk about, uh, over the last uh, 10 minutes that we have, some of the things that you think that our audience ought to know in terms of how we might be able to greater deal with some of the children that are neglected or abused. And Ms. Uh, Burns will sort of tie into what you're talking about and mm -hmm. she'll take about three or four minutes and then we'll go back and, and eventually end this show for today. Well, you know, Dr. Henry, I think one of the things I think adults need to open, we, as adults we need to open our eyes and pay more close attention to, uh, to youth. Not only our own children, but children in general. Because children are experiencing, you know, in this day and age, peer pressure that these children are facing in this day and age, man, it's just unbelievable. And, and, and they are displaying certain behaviors and, and character defects and faults and stuff like that. And instead of criticizing and talking about, and that's a bad little boy right there, that's a mean little girl and that kind of stuff like that, you know, I think we should be trying to find a way to, to, to ask ourselves, you know, that's got to be a reason. That, that's, that's something at the core there that's causing this child to maybe act this way or behave this way. And, and as the topic suggests, we're talking about meeting the needs because if a child is, to, in my opinion, if a child is acting out in a, in, in a way that's really just, you know, off the track. Outrageous yeah, in a real sense. Yeah, uh -huh. you know, that's got to be something there. Mm -hmm. In a, lot of, in a lot of cases, you know, there, there's some neglect. There's a, there's a lack of love maybe that's being shared with that child, you know, and that child is, is, is rebelling against the fact that they're not being loved and cared for and, and nourished the way that my Bible tells us that we should do. You should nourish a child. And, and I'd be the first to say that I wasn't the greatest parent, you know, uh, around because at that time I was caught up in my own active drug addiction when I was young and I was wild and stuff like that when uh, my boys and stuff were born and stuff. So, you know, but I, I grew, I, I, have, I had a desire to, to be a good parent, you know, and, and I grew into it, you know what I'm saying? Most people do. Yeah, uh -huh. but you know, you got folks out here that, that, that think they know what they're doing and to suggest to them, you know, like, why don't you do a parenting class or something like that? And that's like, oh, parenting class, you know, I, I got this, you know, you do a parenting class. Yeah, but anybody yeah. can be a parent. Yeah. Is that what we're, and, and I would imagine you run across that kind of uh, I mean, that kind of attitude quite often in what you do, Ms. Burns. Right, and it's, it's approach, I think, is important because how do we break those barriers? Because a lot of these families, you know, and just like ourselves, we all have a history, you know, with, uh, 
how do we, they've been, a lot of them have been abused and neglected mm -hmm. or in uh, drug addiction and, never, um, and, and some of them are still active. So how can we break those barriers? And I think uh, Pastor Walker said one of the keys is, um, is love because a kid and, and everybody needs love. love. Mm -hmm. And how do you access that to, um, because that as children, they have to have that in order to, to survive. They have to, and I, I, when I do home studies, I'd have grandparents, you know, they'd be very concerned and, um, you know, I would say freaking out about, you know, their well-being of their child. And I'm like, look, there's plenty of kids. I worked in uh, DCS and foster care for a year. I was like, look, they, there's plenty of kids out there who have nobody, I said, but they have you. And that's very important because mm -hmm. that is what's gonna make the difference. With love, things will make mm -hmm. a difference. Mm -hmm. And that's important. And then the challenge that, that I have, and I think uh, workers that, have, that care about um, people and, and that are trying really hard not to be jaded, is how do you get somebody to really know that you mm -hmm. care about them and you're not just, you're not being judgmental, mm -hmm. but you're actually doing that because you, you do care. Mm -hmm. So how do you show that? And, and in reality, it's, to just be natural with it, to be you know concerned that I'm here if you choose it, but unfortunately we do have to deal with people's will. Mm -hmm. But we do our best, and we definitely um, continue to do what we can. Um, and prayer is a big part of that too, mm -hmm. of um, being focused mm -hmm. of what do I need to do because I could be focused all over the place, but what do I need to do to be mm -hmm. focused? Um, and it's um, so it's important in to tell them to be very real and be honest because the and again the court is not being um, punitive at all but then in my mind children do need those boundaries and then a lot of them don't have the parents that need to show them the boundaries so how do we do that as a community I think that's what's very frustrating for me that um, because I have to be so candid with some of the kids of like if I see your name an obituary somewhere, I can say I tried, mm -hmm. but you gotta want to. Mm -hmm. And I and I, maybe some people would disagree with my approach, but I have to be real and honest. And also, I, I have a conscience, and I really do care about uh, families of saying if something did happen, because I've only had one so far. Um, and I can honestly say when I went to the funeral mm -hmm. that I tried. Mm -hmm. And I think as society, we have to have that, mm -hmm. and we have to show. Um, break down the barriers of where we're not so jaded, mm -hmm. where we're still in this fight to love mm -hmm. one another. Mm -hmm. And not talking about no love of letting them do whatever they want. That's mm -hmm. not real love. Love is I'm going to fight for you despite of all the resistance that you're showing. I always give my, my families that what comes to mind every time I talk to them is you may go over me, you may go under me, but if I see you jumping off a cliff or jumping off the deep end, my hands are gonna fly, I'm gonna try, try, try until it's all said and done. And then if you go over me or under me, then that's your business. But at least I can say with my conscience, I've done it. I think that's the key to this work because it's a serious, it's important work. Mm -hmm. It's um, the very, uh, what makes society, you know, um, worth living, what makes life worth living. Mm -hmm very important and I think a lot of us get jaded in this work and we have to continue to fight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact I, I think one of the most important things I think we've said this uh, on many occasions pastor mm -hmm. and we talk about love and I yeah. think that uh, no matter what situation a child or an individual might be in if you demonstrate to that individual Absolutely. no matter who you are or who that child or who that person might be that you have respect understanding, goodwill toward them, and that uh, you wish them the best. Absolutely. And I think that if you demonstrate that to an individual, no matter what situation that they might come from, I think that they're able to buy into some of the things. As a matter of fact, you have to demonstrate that before you can start teaching them anything. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's amazing because with my, <clears throat> excuse me, with, that, with my grandchildren, you know, they're just out of the blue. Granddaddy, what? I love you. You know, mm -hmm. Granny, I love you. You know, and mm -hmm. come and want a hug. Sometimes uh -huh. I'll be asleep. They'll come wake me up. When, I just want a hug, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's because we're showing them that kind of love. And, you know, when you look at love, love attracts. Mm -hmm. and, and you see young people being attracted to these gangs. Mm -hmm. this, these gangs are showing a strange kind of love, love that's attracting mm -hmm. these young people to the gangs because they feel like, 
they got a sense of, of camaraderie there and, and there's a sense of loyalty mm -hmm. and, and they're making them feel like, you know, you're wanted, you're needed, you, you belong, you know, you love. But it's a strange kind of love, but at mm -hmm. the same time, it, it's attracting them, mm -hmm. you know. But that love, there's a power mm -hmm. in, in this thing called love. Love it, is strange. Yeah, That's, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it it, it's a powerful thing, mm -hmm. you know. And if you and if you walk in it consistently, mm -hmm. and, and and you you fashion and form your life based upon mm -hmm. how can I meet an individual's need as opposed to what can I get from, from this baby. individual? Mm -hmm. I think you have a better way, and especially like breaking that barrier down and when you're trying to reach these families to, to make them see that, you know, that there is a need for them to maybe get some training in terms of how to raise a child. If, if you approach them, again, you approach, if it's, a, if it's from a foundation of love, uh, people can sense it, people can, can mm -hmm. feel it, people can mm -hmm. identify with it, even the coldest, heart, mm -hmm. you know, the power of love will no, penetrate it. It will. Yeah, it, it penetrates will. it. Ms. Well, Ms. Burns, uh, the, the final minute of this show. Also, I think it's good to talk about resiliency um, because even when you're dealing with the, what, what people would consider the meanest or the baddest, mm -hmm. there's still beauty within that person.